And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Mona Capel, who during her near-death experience, encountered her deceased brother on the other side. Mona, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Mona, let's start on the day that you had this NDE and go from there. Okay. I had just turned 16. I had just got my driver's license. My parents were letting me use the family vehicle for the first time on my own. I decided to ask my girlfriend to go to the beach. We went to the beach. Um, Lake St. Clair uh, was Metro Beach. We put our belongings on the beach, decided to go into the water. It was a beautiful day, blue skies, not a cloud. The sun was warm. It felt great. Uh, We started wading in the water. As we got a little further out towards our waist or so, we just started jumping in the water, getting fully wet. Uh, Next thing I know, there is a group of teenage boys over to the side about three or four of them, and they started splashing us. We started splashing them back. You know, we're having fun. We're all laughing and carrying on. Next thing I know, one of the bigger guys was like right up to me, and he started dunking my head in the water, and he was holding it too long. So about the, I don't know, second or third time he did that, I went to gasp for air, but apparently my lungs filled with water. I remember hearing the bubbles. I could see them, thousands of bubbles. Next thing I know, I'm in a brown cave. Okay, and very dim light around it. I felt a presence next to me. I looked to my side, and it was a taller figure in a brown robe. It was real flowy, long arms, full sleeves, hood. I went to look at the face. There was no face. I could see right through it. It was like he was transparent. I could see the other side of the cave. He all of a sudden lifted his arm up, and I followed his arm, and it was to a huge group of people. Most of them I remember at the time recognizing. There's only a few I remember now, and that was an aunt, an uncle, and a school friend. Next thing I know, and they were all clapping and smiling, like cheering me on. And next thing I know, he raised his arm again. And that took me to my life review. And that was black and white photos. That's the only way I can explain it. Just like on a reel going, you know, past me, my whole life. Everybody I knew, things I had done, uh, I was enjoying it. I was very comfortable. I wasn't afraid. Next thing I know, he raised his arm again, this time straight up. I looked up, and it was like a tunnel going up and a very bright light at the end. I started floating up towards it. And as I got closer, the light got brighter and bigger. Next thing I know, there's like some pastel clouds over the light, but I could still see the light. As I got up towards the edge of the cave, a little arm stuck out. And I looked at the arm and I looked further up. It was my brother. Big smile on his face. I felt the love. He was just, I I, I don't know who was happier to see the other, you know, whether it was me or him. But as I reached to grab his hand, this very second we were going to touch, I found myself floating up above the beach with the presence that was with me. I see my girlfriend carrying me to shore in her arms. I seen a crowd gathering. I seen the lifeguards, several lifeguards running towards her. Next thing I know, I'm spitting up water laying on the beach. I couldn't talk. 
They just kept spitting up water. They were throwing questions at me. All I could do was shake my head yes or no. I could get nothing out verbally. So after a while, they figured, I guess, that I was okay to leave. So they told us we could go. As we walked back to the car, I felt my lungs were filling up again. I almost fell, but suddenly it just passed. My girlfriend and I got in the car. I, I couldn't talk to her. I couldn't tell her what happened. I didn't understand it. I was scared. We were both very quiet. And to this day, I don't know what she experienced. Uh, I have tried in the last few years trying to locate her because I would like to fill in those blanks after all these years. But for almost 60 years, I kept this inside of me. I did tell a couple of my sisters. I have told friends. I told my husband, and he was very supportive. He believed the whole thing, especially after I started having experiences after that I would share with him. And later we found out that they actually happened. Mona, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Do you think that being that kept raising his arm was like the Grim Reaper or something? No, not at all. I felt nothing but peace, love with it. Um, actually, at the time, I thought it might have been God. But I look at it now as it could have been my guide, you know, guiding me through this experience. All but right. I never had any fear. There was never any verbal communication. And it wasn't, I can't say it was telepathic. It was just, I knew. It's just, I knew everything he was trying to show me. Do you know whether you were dead or they had to resuscitate you at all once they brought you out of the water? I have no idea, Jeff. And that's something that has haunted me. I just, for so long, I kept it inside. I was afraid to talk about it. I couldn't understand it myself. Since your experience, have you noticed that you had any new abilities that could be considered psychic? Absolutely. Like what? Okay, uh, I'll start out with dreams. My husband and I, every summer, would drive from California to Michigan. We had several stops with relatives, uh, friends along the way. Our first stop would be in the Dallas area. We have been on the road for over 20 hours, other than potty and food breaks, that was about it. So we got into my uh, brother's sister's house. We visited a while. Went to bed, got up the next morning, had breakfast. All of a sudden, I felt this extreme tiredness. So I says, I'm going to go lay down for a bit. I laid down. I got up from a disturbing dream. I went and told my husband right away. I says, I dreamt that Carol called and said that her brother had drowned in a gravel pit there in Southern California. Mind you, this is back in the early 70s. We didn't have cell phones. I didn't call my friends when I was out of town. You know, two and a half weeks later, we get back to California. We're unloading the vehicle. My phone rings. I answered it. It's my friend Carol telling me that her brother had drowned in a gravel pit. Wow. I had another incident like that. My husband and I worked together. There was another couple at work. The four of us went on a cruise together. Uh, I believe it was the Caribbean cruise. We were at sea all day. And we were sitting in a bar playing pinochle, drinking pina coladas. I got extremely tired. I says, you know, guys, I got to go lay down for a bit. I went to the room, took a nap. Again, had a weird dream, and I told them all about it when I got back to them. 
I had dreamt that the uh, I was a purchasing agent, and the young lady who did my paperwork for me, I dreamt that they had fired her while I was gone. And I said, That's weird, you know. And I shared it with them. Uh, get back to work a week later, my boss calls me into her office. We chatted a little bit about the trip. She goes, I have to let you know, and I'm so sorry. She goes, but we had to let Valerie go. There's no way I would have known this. Absolutely no way. Does this happen often or just once in a blue moon? Once in a blue moon. There for a, a long time, I would have premonitions. And they had to do with a friend of my husband's he had known for many years. He lived in Wyoming. We were in California. On occasion, he would come to our area because he uh, was an entrepreneur and he was uh, going to these different trade shows. At least four times, I looked at my husband and I says, you know, we haven't seen or heard from Gene in a while. Well, usually within a few hours, he'd show up at our door. And my husband, the last time it happened, he goes, have you been talking to Gene? You know, uh, yep. Nope. It, it was just so bizarre because it it happened with him. Uh, there, there were a lot of other incidents of things. Uh, let's see. Now that I'm trying to think of them, it, it's hard. Um, well, how else did your life change after your experience? Well, I became kind of withdrawn. Because it, this thing just stayed with me for the longest time. I, I couldn't understand it. I didn't know who to talk to. You know, it was before we had the internet like we have now. I couldn't go on and research it. So I just withdrew into myself for a very long time. And then after a while, after I started reading more about it, I was able to come out of that. Um, it, it, it's been difficult, but I'm just in the last two years, I'm understanding it more. And I know now I'm not the only one that's ever experienced something like this. There's a lot of people out there, uh, stories, a lot of them are similar but yet each one is unique. They have their differences. Has the memories of this experience faded over time? Not really. Sometimes it's like it's just happened. And then other times it's like faded. The one part I noticed that has faded the most is the group of people that met me. A lot of the faces have faded. The, like I said before, I think uh, there was only three that are real distinct with me right now. And that was an aunt, an uncle, and a school friend. Do you fear death at all? Not at all. No. The only thing that scares me about death is how it's going to affect my loved ones. And that, that, uh, actually, I look forward to it. It was so peaceful, so loving. Uh, nothing on earth here I've ever experienced compares to it. If you had a friend that was suffering over the loss of a loved one, what kind of advice would you give? Oh, I've been through this a couple times. Uh, in fact, my dear sister just lost her fiance. They've been together for over 20 years. I spent about three months most of the time at her house helping him and her. Uh, he was on hospice, and she has uh, chronic Lyme's disease. So she has been limited to what she could do, especially physically. So I spent most of my time over there assisting them. And I, I actually sat and spoke with him one day about my experience. Uh, I... Uh, continually tell my sister and she believes me she knows the story and I just let her know you will see him again and it will be better than ever 
you know, the love will be stronger, you'll be happier, you'll be pain-free, worry-free. Since your experience, have you had any other out-of-body experiences? I have. I mean, I feel that it was definitely out of body. Um, it was in California. My husband was still alive. We were sleeping. I remember being awakened, and it was from an old friend. Next thing I know, I'm floating at my bedroom door with this friend watching my husband sleep. And then I know I could see where my body had been in the bed. And he just kept looking at me and smiling. But next thing I know, I was laying in bed with my eyes wide open. I, I don't know what the purpose of that was. Mm. Uh, unless it was maybe some vivid dream. But to me, it was just too real. I've had vivid dreams before, but not like this. Um, I've had visions and I don't like to talk, you know, the specifics of them because they're things that have not happened and I'm afraid they might happen. Uh, like one day I was sitting in my living room here watching TV. I got up to go get something out of the kitchen. And as I raised up, I looked over to the side at a sofa and there was a young boy sitting there. I didn't know him, and I can remember exactly what he was wearing. But then the next thing I know, I seen myself driving a vehicle, and this young boy walked out in front of me, and I hit him. I wasn't going very fast, and I, I can, it was just so bizarre. And my daughter was in the kitchen at the time, and I told her, I go, Ronnie. I just seen this happen, you know, from the time I got up from the chair to go into the kitchen. At the time, I didn't recognize the young man, but I do now. And it scares me. How are you inspired by your NDE? Well, now that I understand it more, I try not to take things too seriously. Uh, minor things, you know, like the housework, yard work, you know, stuff like that. I, I'm much more relaxed. Uh, I try to be more loving, more caring. Uh, try not to complain so much. Uh, just try to keep myself at peace. Did your religious or spiritual views change after your experience? Uh, I would have to say at first it was stronger because I actually thought that presence that was with me was God. And he was showing me all this. But now I'm not so sure. I don't think it was God. I think it was just a guide, you know, showing me through all of this. Um, I still believe in God. Uh, there was nothing religious in my experience. I feel it was all more spiritual. Well, after watching this podcast, people may want to ask you questions. Are you mm -hmm. open to that? Oh, absolutely. What's the best way to contact you? Uh, let's go email. All right. What's your address? It's Capel, C A P L E, Mona, four, the number four, at gmail.com. All right. Capel Mona four at gmail.com. Correct. Yes, I am more than willing to share what I can. Uh, if I can help somebody in some way, maybe ease their fears. I'm not looking to write a book or any of this other stuff. You know, I'm not looking to make anything off it. I just want to be able to help people if there's any way I can. Well, just by sharing your story today, you're going to be helping people. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Mona, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Be at peace with yourself. Find peace with yourself. 
you know, love those around you, do good, be kind, help those who can. I think those are the most positive things I could think of right now. Well, that's good enough for me. Mona, thank you for your message and thank you for being my guest. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. it it's been a long time. I wanted to get this out. And now I have. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.